In this example, we examine a piping and instrumentation diagram of a fired heater. Let's have a closer look. The fired heater is seen here. It has eight piping connections. Starting our way from top to bottom, the piping system comprises of a flue gas exit pipe, two shale gas inlet pipes, two shale gas outlet pipes, one air inlet pipe, and two fuel gas inlet pipes. Let's examine each pipe in detail. We begin with the shale gas pipe at the top of the diagram. This pipe carries shale gas which flows through two manual gate valves and is connected to the fired heater at the top of the convection zone. The flow path of the gas inside the furnace is depicted here. The heated shale gas then exits the furnace at the bottom of the convection zone and flows through a one-inch pipe to feed the hydrogenolysis. Notice here the presence of a pressure relief valve. This is a safety device, which in case of overpressure, will pop fully open to relieve excess gas to the flue gas piping network. The second pipe feeding the fired heater is also carrying shale gas. However, the shale gas was first processed in the hydrogenolysis. So we can assume from this piping and instrumentation diagram that the hydrogenolysis process is carried out in two steps. Each step requires preheating the shale gas feed. In this case, the shale gas flows through a manual gate valve, then enters the furnace at the top of the radiation zone. The flow path of the gas inside the furnace is depicted here. The heated shale gas then exits the furnace at the bottom of the radiation zone and flows through a 2-inch pipe to feed downstream equipment. The next line, that you can see here, carries process air. Air is admitted to the furnace to ensure the combustion of the fuel gas and generate heat necessary for the furnace to work. The air flows through a 1-inch pipe and a flow control valve, tagged CV02. The air is then mixed with fuel gas and burned. The flue gas resulting from this combustion exits the fired heater overhead. The fuel gas to be mixed with air is supplied to the fired heater through these two lines. Let's examine them in detail. If we follow each line on the diagram, we notice that the fuel gas is made of the shale gas. And also of the exhaust gas from the pressure swing adsorber, referred to on this diagram as PSA. The two streams are mixed using a three-way valve, tag THV01. The control of the gas mixture is done through this control loop. We'll come back to it in a few moments. Now, the gas mixture flows through a 1-inch pipe, three valves in a series, two manual gate valves, and one control valve, tag CV01. Notice here that the control valve is equipped with a bypass line that has a manual globe valve. Under normal operating conditions, this manual globe valve is closed. The purpose of this bypass line is to allow safe replacement of the control valve without the necessity to interrupt gas flow or shut down the furnace. First, the globe valve on the bypass line is opened. This establishes a continuous parallel flow of gas to the fired heater. Next, the two manual gate valves are closed to isolate the control valve. This action interrupts the flow of gas through the main line. This has no effect on the process continuity, as the bypass line is open and gas is flowing through it. After shutting off flow on the main line, manual drain valves, which are not depicted on the diagram, are open to bleed the pipe section and eliminate any trapped gases. Following this action, the main line can be safely handed over to the maintenance team for control valve replacement and repair. Now, under normal operating conditions, the gas mixture flows entirely through the control valve. The flow of gas is then split to feed the burners of the fired heater.
So, these are the main process lines, their fluids, and their flow paths. Let's now shift our attention to the process controls. This piping and instrumentation diagram includes two control loops. One loop controls the shale gas and the PSA exhaust gas mixture, as seen here. And a second loop controls the flow of the gas mixture to the burners. The first control loop includes a board-mounted pressure transmitter. This transmitter measures the pressure of the shale gas before it is mixed with the PSA exhaust gas. The transmitter then sends the pressure measurement to a pressure controller. If the measured pressure deviates from a predetermined set point, the pressure controller will trigger a control signal to adjust the opening of the pressure control valve placed on the PSA exhaust gas. This aims to maintain a constant gas pressure supplied to the burners. Now, as pressure and flow are interrelated, a constant gas pressure is also equivalent to a constant gas flow. The second control loop is a little bit more complex. It involves two temperature transmitters, one on the pipe exiting the convection zone, tag TT02, and another on the pipe exiting the radiation zone, tag TT03. As well as a flow control element on the pipe supplying air to the burners. This flow control element is tagged FRC01. Recall, FRC stands for Flow Recording Controller. Now, as seen here, the control loop performs a logic function on the two temperatures. The function is tagged XT03. The present piping and instrumentation diagram does not indicate the nature of this function, but an educated guess is that this logic function is a comparison function. It takes the higher temperature measurement for the purpose of control. The flow controller FC03 triggers two control signals simultaneously. The first control signal is pneumatic. It acts on the fuel gas control valve CV01 to adjust the flow of gas to the burners. The second control signal is electrical. It serves as input to the flow recording controller FRC01, which converts it to a pneumatic signal to act on the air control valve CV02 to adjust the flow of air admitted to the burners. This control setting forces the airflow to follow the gas flow according to a specific ratio.